I know. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Box Bandy here. So, those of you who were there know how bad my live stream was Thursday night. My internet was really messed up. It was hot. I had to have the air conditioner on. It was very loud in the background. I don't think people could hear me very well. I was so nervous because of all the things that were going on with the internet and I get nervous. Anyhow, I do live stream because I can't talk straight. Like on this video, if I made too many mistakes, I can go in and edit them out. On live streams, it's live. That's it. You can, there are no do overs. So it was pretty bad. I don't think people heard me very well. The picture was very pixelated. And even the YouTube side was like five minutes behind the StreamYard side. And I didn't know how to fix that. So I, I'm sorry about that. So today I'm going to do a little recap of what I shared that night in case you didn't get it. So I think it'll be much better today. Well, a lot of you know that back in 2019, I had a stroke. I lost all ability to speak, maybe was able to put two words together. I had face paralysis, tingling tongue, my left arm went numb. I went to the uh, ER in Goodyear, Arizona, and they did some tests. I don't even remember all the tests they did. But they never gave me a diagnosis. They released me and never gave me a diagnosis. But when I saw my regular doctor, he said I had a stroke. And then when I had broken my back, uh, the all the doctors there said I had had a stroke because they tested me for different things. So the for the past four years, I've been working hard to recover. Talking on YouTube has helped me a lot. I still have struggles trying to get the words out. My brain thinks faster than my tongue. So, anyhow, I have gotten better as far as my speech goes. The numbness in my arm, sometimes, sometimes it's not bad. Sometimes it's so bad I can't hold my arm up. I feel a lot of pulling through this arm and numbness. And when I try to hold things, sometimes my fingers drop things. So that is pretty much really the only thing that's left over from the first stroke. But off and on throughout the last four years, very rare, but it was happening. I, my face would go numb. My tongue would dig, get tingly. And I have more difficulty talking, especially when I'm tired or stressed or under, under pressure. So here's my problem. I'm on Medicare, and for supplemental, because I'm low income, I received Medicaid through the Arizona State Medical. I'm subscribed to a United Healthcare, with the, which they put me in the ACCS, whatever that is, program, and I have to see certain doctors. They're not accepted everywhere. For major medical, my Medicare will cover it. For all the other stuff, that's not major, that Medicare doesn't cover, the Medicaid covers. However, in courtside, where I've been for about four years off and on, they have one small clinic with one doctor usually, and sometimes a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant. They have good, pretty good nurses too. However, everything has to go through the doctor. They have a small x-ray clinic for ma minor x-rays, and they have a lab. You could get labs done there. Other than that, everything gets sent to either Yuma or Lake Havasu, there's nothing in between. So we have to travel a long ways for anything, any kind of procedures, anything beyond that. If we want to see any other doctors, 
because there are no other, other doctors close by in our network. We have to pay cash, and there's no way I could pay cash. It would end up being outrageous. So in emergency, we can go to the Parker Hospital, but anything big, big would have to be sent to Phoenix, Yuna, Yuma, or Havasu. So, so far, I have been blessed. I had my eye surgeries done in Phoenix, Arizona, actually Mesa, outside of Phoenix. That went pretty well, but my eyes have not been good ever since. They're still not right, and I still have vision problems. So, anyhow, so what I wanted to do today, I'll explain what's been happening with my eyes, and I'll talk about some other symptoms. In March, around March, I was having, I have shared that on my YouTube, I was experiencing extreme fatigue. I was experiencing brain fog, memory loss, um, balance problems, and my eyes seemed to be getting worse at times. Not all the time, but at times. We seemed to be getting much worse. So I finally went to the doctor. And he thought maybe my thyroid medication was off. He'd had no clue. He wouldn't really come up with anything. But he ordered the labs to have my thyroid tested. And so he upped my thyroid medication. And for a long time, it didn't seem to do anything better. So I started my own health regimen of certain vitamins and minerals and I was eating better and cutting out things out of my diet that I thought might be affecting me and I started feeling quite a bit better but during that time on top of everything else I was having a numbness all the way from in my neck all the way to below my armpits um, and it was like almost it was spasms what it was they were spazzing him spazzing, can't say it, spasms, and it felt like not sharp pains like any kind of attack or anything. It just felt like was getting kind of par paralyzed. So I was concerned about that when I had gone to the doctor. So he did order a couple x-rays that they could do right there, and it didn't really, didn't really show up anything. So I thought I was okay. So I had, in the past year, I've been trying to schedule my eye surgeries. I finally, because they told me I had cataracts, and the, the doctor did send me to the vision specialist in Navasu, where I was diagnosed with progress, very well, well hyper, whatever. The cataracts were far in advanced, uh, advanced stages. So he said, I need to have cataract surgeries in both eyes. So I started trying to work out a schedule. So that I have a lot of obstacles because I'm in Quartzsite, which is 75, 80 miles away each way. I have to deal with the dog in this heat. I can't leave him at home. I have to have somebody drive me to get to the appointments. And so I finally scheduled uh, eye surgery the first time, probably back in June or first part of July. And my ride had to cancel because she had to be out of state. So then I had to call them. They canceled the whole thing, even though they already scheduled the pre-op, the first and second surgeries. So they canceled that. Then the next time I thought I had the appointment, they canceled in again for their reasons, whatever their reasons were. I think they, my doctor's not going to be there, the my eye surgeon, I should say. So they canceled that one. So we rescheduled it. I thought I had it all set up. So I had supposed to see the pre-op on the 5th of September. I was supposed to have my first eye surgery on the 11th of September and the second one on the 25th of September. And I said, had a friend that's going to take me, take care of the dog. We were going to stay in a motel for two nights so I can do the follow-up appointment at the day after the surgery while we were still there. 
and everything was all said. However, the reason I was sharing about the numbness, what I'm having is TIAs in my face and my arms and speech problems. They're called TIA, transexemic attack. What it is, is, uh, is a temporary problem with the blood flow to the brain. They're also called mini strokes. My mother had them a lot before she passed away. So I was concerned because I felt that I is gonna, it's a warning sign, really, for possible future stroke. A full blown stroke. I don't want to have that. So I called the doctor's office and they said I need to do, go to the emergency room. Well, so, like I said, about a week and a half ago, I was sitting outside with my friend and my face went completely numb on the left side. My tongue was numb. I was having trouble concentrating and all of a sudden I couldn't talk. It lasted about 15 minutes. I was able to mumble a couple words but not the, not actual word. You hear how I stumble with my words. So I was concerned about it but it ended after about 15 minutes. Then later that evening I had numbness again in my cheek and then over the next day, I had a couple more. So I went to the ER, and they kept me there for quite a few hours. Really, they didn't do much, but they did take me in and get a CAT scan, and they did some more thyroid labs and a urine test, whatever. After several hours, they put me on EKG, I guess, whatever the thing they put up there. Never saw the machine hooked up to it, but whatever. <laughs> There's no point in arguing with them because they get all weird on you. They don't have, and what happened to doctors that had bedside and manner? They would listen. They would give you suggestions. Now they try to give you something to clear up the symptoms where the symptoms are a warning of something more serious. So they don't try to find out what causing the symptoms. They just try to fix the symptoms. So the, yeah, while I was at the hospital, I asked them about the CAT scan. They said, it shows that you uh, have a, uh, had what they say. It shows you had a stroke before. Whatever. I said, okay, so what about now? They said, well, the doctor wants to give you steroids and Tylenol in a shot form for your headache. I said, I don't need steroids for my headaches. Anyhow, they gave me the Tylenol. And when I left, that was a diagnosis. Diagnosis from the doctor at the ER. Said I have a headache. He did suggest I need to go see the neurologist. So that was all fine. So I thought, since I wasn't really in any serious jeopardy, apparently, I thought, okay, that's fine. So I went ahead to my eye appointment with the pre-op uh, on the 5th. And when I went there, I mentioned, they asked me if I have any other things going on. And I told them about this situation. So they said, well, we're going to have to get clearance after spending an hour with them answering all their questions. You're, you're going to have to get a clearance from your doctor before we can proceed with the surgery. It was, everything was all set up. Really, why didn't you tell me before? They said, well, we didn't know before that we would need to get a clearance, I thought. Okay. So they faxed over a request for clearance from a doctor. They told me, me to make sure that he gets that and sends it out right away. Otherwise, we would not be able to do the surgery. So I stopped by there on the way home from Havasu, and I asked them they'd be received it. They said yes, and they said, but there's no way we're going to get the clearance out because the doctor has to see you first. 
I said he just saw me. He just, I went all the way through all this. They said, well, he still has to see you again before you can get clearance. I said, well, can he do a phone appointment or can he have, can you have him call me? No, you're going to have to come in. So when can I get in? Not till the following week, late in the week on Thursday. So in other words, I had to get, I would, would, was supposed to call the uh, eye doctor and cancel the surgery. So I, I got ready. I went home and I got a call from the eye doctor. They said they have already was told that they couldn't get clearance in time. So they called me to cancel my eye appointments. Now I don't know when I'm going to get the eye surgeries. I did set up appointment with the neurologist. I will see them on the 12th and we'll see what happens there. Maybe they can tell everything is okay. Let my doctor know, but I have to see my doctor on Thursday after I see the neurologist. So maybe that's a good thing. Anyhow, so I'm Tuesday on neurology and Thursday with my eye doctor. And that's pretty much what I was trying to share on my live stream, which was so terrible, awful. I'm very frustrated. I The little clip I put out, I'm ready to pull my hair out. I'm very frustrated. It's not easy to get somebody to take me all the way to Havasu, 150 miles round trip. They are not going to sit and out in that heat for four or five hours while I'm having eye surgery. So we had to get a motel room. And it's just a hassle. And then Maxie cannot be left at home alone in this heat. Uh, even with air conditioning, it's not that perfectly reliable. What I did share in there is my air conditioning is working very well. And I will share another video about what they did and what they found out how my air conditioner's problems has been resolved. Right now it's hot in here because you can't hear me when I have it on. It's noisy. So I turned it off. It's warm. So yeah, I will end this video here. And please uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And comment in the comment section. Thank you so much for all your support and just keep loving each other. Let us not be divided. Try to stay positive. I know things happen every day. Every day something new is happening. But just try to stay positive and let's not fight with each other. You know, it's okay to agree to disagree about things. We're not all robots. We don't all think the same. So I get irritated. I express my irritation and frustration, but I still try to stay positive. I know that I have God on my side. He will take care of this. You know, one way or the no other, another, he is in control. I might get frustrated. I might be in a hurry to have things done the way I think it should be done. But ultimately, he's in control. And I have to just trust him. So thank you for watching. You all have a great day.